Hello and welcome to our live discussion. My name is Jorge Galindo and I am the Communications Officer at the IOM Global Migration Data Analysis Center here in Berlin. Uh, today I'm joined by uh, Frank Lasco, Director of GMDAC, and Elisa Mosler Vidal, who is GMDAC Data and Policy Officer here in Berlin as well. Welcome. Um, and we're also joined remotely by Michel uh, Poulin, who's one of the leading experts in migration data collection um, with uh, long uh, field experience. Um, today we're discussing the launch of a new report titled How Countries Manage Migration Data, Evidence from Six Countries. And so I'm very happy to welcome our guests and I hope that those tuning in will have uh, questions for us. You can drop them in the comments and we'll be happy to, to look into those as well. Welcome again. And I will turn now to Frank for my uh, first question. Frank, welcome again. Um, this study looks at the challenges and opportunities in migration related data collection and analysis at the national level. Um, why did GMDAC decide to embark on this project? Thank you very much, uh, Jorge, for the question. Um, I think all of us working at this center uh, ask ourselves the, the, this kind of question nearly every day. How can we improve data on international migration? It is one of the key questions facing the international community. It's the first objective of the global compact for safe, orderly and regular migration. Countries around the world have agreed that they need to do more to improve data and evidence on migrations to inform policies and practices. So one of the reasons why we carried out this study is we wanted to investigate what are some of the uh, challenges and also opportunities at the national level to improve data on migration. So we decided to select six countries from three different regions of the world, Africa, uh, Europe, and the Americas. And we decided to take a different approach from previous studies. What often happens in the field of migration statistics is that, that uh, agencies will send out a questionnaire to a national statistical office, and they'll ask for some detailed information about the kinds of questions that are included in the census or whether or not a recent survey has been carried out, etc. We decided to adopt a different approach. We thought that it would be very interesting to do some what, what many consider to be more qualitative research, in-depth research with um, not only the national statistical offices in these countries, in these six pilot countries, but also with a range of different stakeholders. And that was a deliberate decision because migration data, migration statistics are not owned solely by those who work in national statistical offices. They're not solely created uh, or collected for the purpose of informing people who work for national statistical offices. Those offices are often there to serve the wider um, public, ministries, civil society, to promote a better understanding of migration and mobility in those countries. And so by what we did in each of these countries is we, we identified people to interview, not only in the national statistical offices, but also in key ministries dealing with migration. And across the board, we asked questions about how the data is being collected, what are the main gaps and challenges that national authorities see in this area? And what are some of the examples of innovative practice? And we're going to be hearing uh, in a moment or two about some of the interesting ideas and lessons learned from this study. So. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, as you mentioned, I think uh, a big question then is about the practical implications. And I would like to hear um, from Elisla Mosler Vidal also, uh, if you can tell us, you know, what, what happens with uh, with this study? What are the, the the practical implications for stakeholders working in migration data from this uh, report? Thank you very much, Jorge. Um, so the report has, I believe, 17 sort of more practical recommendations 
I'm not going to talk about, all, talk about all of them here, but I'll maybe comment on two sort of wider implications uh, of the report, I believe, for practitioners uh, in migration data. And the first is really that I think the study makes a case for there to be greater exchange and more dialogue between the national and global levels when it comes to migration data. So there has been a greater focus on migration data in recent years. We have the first objective, uh, as Frank mentioned, of the GCM focusing on migration data. We have more energy sort of into um, calling different countries to improve the migration evidence base nationally, as well as at global level. Um, and there's also an interesting development happening now, which is the revision of the 1998 recommendations on migration statistics. So at global level, there's a lot more focus on the topic. And this report, I think, has interesting implications for how this global level dialogue is really linked to national data practices uh, really on the ground. So the report, um, interestingly, looked also at how far some of the UN recommended core questions on migration are included in um, various data collection tools in each country, including censuses and various household surveys. Um, it found, for example, that country of birth was included in all the censuses in all the countries. However, country of citizenship was not always included, which is also a recommended um, sort of UN recommended, excuse me, uh, a variable to include. So I think when we think about how these kinds of recommendations are developed at global level and how they're also rolled out, it's important to remember to engage the national perspective uh, throughout to really build off real uh, migration data sort of realities and experiences at national level to really look at which recommendations, which specific guidance points are more realistic at national level, which ones are perhaps more challenging for countries to implement in practice, and really where do we go with that? Um, a kind of related point also is that the study also looked at um, the sustainable, excuse me, the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and also the Global Compact, and how far this has impacted migration data in each country. And interestingly, um, it sort of suggested that uh, the impact of these very important global processes that do mention migration data, um, their impact has been potentially limited at national level. Um, it's not really clear that this has had a concrete impact in improving data on migration and development, on safe and orderly migration, which was really the key hope uh, when some of these frameworks were adopted. So I think this also sort of points to a similar point that to for there to be real progress on the ground when it comes to migration data nationally, more work is needed to sort of connect the dots uh, between the global uh, and the national level. One kind of final implication that I sort of find interesting from the report as well is that I think it makes also a clear case for more peer-to-peer -peer knowledge sharing between countries. So a lot of the challenges that came up in the report among the six very, very different countries were really similar. And I think this is interesting because uh, we see a lot of, for example, data fragmentation, coordination issues when it comes to migration data. Um, and these looked really similar, even though the contexts varied a lot. So I think that kind of suggests there could be more space really created for countries to uh, gather together, discuss practical lessons learned, potential solutions, um, and yeah, and sort of discuss with each other ways forward. Thank you. Thank you so much, Elisa. And I might go a little bit of script here because now you touched on the important issue of providing a platform for knowledge exchange between countries and various stakeholders. Um, and we've heard of this initiative uh, within the Migration Network Hub that perhaps, Frank, you can just um, raise awareness of. Um, there is now a repository of practices that is part of the Migration Network Hub, which is under the, the, the UN Migration Network. Can you tell us a little, a little bit about the, the objectives of having such a platform and how people can contribute with practices? Uh, and again, um, uh, the importance of sharing knowledge on this issue. Uh, yes, just very briefly, uh, the repository of the UN Migration Network Hub uh, has been created and was launched uh, only last year 
in order to enable everyone who is following and interested in learning more about the implementation of the Global Compact on Migration, um, in giving them a space to share some of their innovative practices. And it goes beyond data, but there are, of course, uh, a number of examples of data projects and initiatives included in the hub. And what is particularly interesting is that um, there is a what's called a peer review process. So more than 100 experts working in the field of migration um, review <coughs> the content of the hub and proposals for um, you know, uploading different types of examples of initiatives on a regular basis um, before these initiatives are then shared with uh, the wider international community. So that's one distinctive feature of it. Um, if I could continue and mention a few more findings from the study, which I think are of particular importance in relation to uh, the Global Compact on Migration and the way forward, because in May of this year uh, in New York, states will come together at something called the International Migration Review Forum, where they will look back uh, uh, over the last four years, uh, four years ago in Marrakesh, the Global Compact on Migration was adopted, and this will be this this meeting in May will be provide an opportunity to take stock of how much progress has been made in implementing the Global Compact, including the first objective of the Compact, which is in fact a cross-cutting objective that relates to all twenty-three objectives of the GCM because it's hard to achieve progress on on those objectives without having good uh, and reliable and timely data. Um, that meeting will, I think, be um, a useful place to consider some of the results and lessons from this study because this is a, a rare example of an in-depth um, qualitative piece of research in this area. And the meeting in New York will not only look backwards, it will also look forwards and it will highlight some of the priorities for the future when it comes to thinking about ways in which we can work together to implement the Global Compact on Migration. So one of the key questions which will be raised is how do we implement a GCM Objective 1? What can countries do um, to improve the collection and analysis and use of and sharing of uh, data on migration? And I think there are some interesting lessons from this uh, new study in that respect. The first one is, is that all six of the countries, even though they, ha they are working in very, very different migration contexts, uh, Djibouti and Nigeria are very different from Canada and Ireland. But all of these countries um, are taking the question of you know, improving data on migration very seriously. We were able to document a number of new initiatives. Um, perhaps those initiatives are not so well known beyond the national context. So I think there's a lot of information that could be shared there more widely and countries can learn from each other. But despite the fact that there is a lot of activity, um, we still find that because migration itself is a cross-cutting issue, um, you know, migration in, is, is many different ministries are interested in migration issues, whether they be interested in labor migration, health issues, the environment, development, etc. So data, when, when it comes to collecting data on migration, it often is scattered between different ministries and different actors and even between government and civil society and the private sector. So one of the key things that we found in this study is that countries, are, although some of them have set up interministerial working groups, there's still much more that they need to do to articulate and develop a national migration data strategy or national migration data plan. So I think that would be one of the recommend, key recommendations coming out of this um, report, which is every country 
is interested in migration data and in, in, and in improving data on migration, but then they have not really fully articulated how they want to you know, reach that goal, what are the specific objectives that they want to achieve in this area, do they have any kind of a roadmap? Um, and that was something which is a, we found, I think, consistently across the six countries, although, as I say, there are some interest, many interesting um, initiatives related to various subtopics. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Frank. And um, we have also with us today Michel Poulain, who is unfortunately not uh, able to join us uh, here in Berlin today. He's joining us remotely. Um, welcome to you, Michel. Uh, we were talking about the, the, the importance of different uh, stakeholders within those countries uh, uh, working on migration-related data to communicate with each other um, and, and to ensure uh, collaboration on, on this issue, the importance of having uh, national migration data strategies in place. Um, I would like to, to hear from you what good practices have been observed uh, to ensure effective collaboration across various government, government agencies and, and sectors. Over to you, Michel. Thank you for your question. And in fact, what I understood when uh, discussing with a lot of stakeholders in the six country under study is that um, the bigger difficulty is to convince the most important authority in the country that data on migration are needed to, do, uh, to support migration policy. In a lot of cases, they are not convinced that these data are needed. And the main problem of collecting this data is probably at national level. Uh, there is a lot of uh, effort at global level to, to push country to produce these data. But the main problem is at national level, because very often uh, the statistical office does not have the, the possibility to develop these data because they don't have support. So any initiative in country that push really the statistical office that give the possibility to statistical office to do new data collection or to improve the situation will be uh, very important. Uh, country has really to understand that uh, these data should be really needed to policy support, which means that the data should be reliable and come on time. It cannot be, uh, just to take an example, if you have a census and you receive the, the, the result of the census five years later, it, it's historical data. It's not anymore useful to develop the policy. So there is a, a full strategy that should be developed within the country to prove that collecting data is very important. It should be reliable, timely data. And and whole effort should go in this direction. And there are definitely some uh, initiatives that are taken in uh, several of the of the six countries. For sure, there are, uh, for example, a state committee on on migration data collection, which means intergovernmental uh, cooperation, varying from country to country. But in some country, this is very active, and there is a section, a working group, working on data, especially on data, not only sharing information on international migration, but also uh, trying to see together how to collect the best data and the most appropriate data for the topic that are really high in the agenda of the migration uh, policy. So this is one aspect that is uh, really important. Then you have a lot of uh, initiative that has been taken. I have, for example, an initiative uh, in Moldova where they did a, a, a big uh, work on border control, trying to use the border data and to see how can we, with the border data, have some indication on migration flow. Because uh, you should uh, remember that you have flow and stock in migration, and stock may be easily captured by a survey or census, while flow are really more difficult to capture. So the best place where you may identify a migrant is at border crossing but you need a special methodology, you need a special cooperation between border guard, Ministry of Interior, Statistical Office, and so on. So there comes the point of coordination and cooperation. Mm -hmm. And cooperation is a big obstacle. This is sensitivity of the data. Some ministry does not want to share their data. 
for two reasons. They say that it's mostly because of sensitivity, but it's maybe also just because there is some problem in the data, double count, uh, missing value, and so on. So a close cooperation between the statistical information uh, institution and the ministry in charge of border control or the ministry in charge of population registration will really help the, the situation. It's a mutual comprehension, mutual support. And sometimes uh, I suggest, and I've seen this in some country, is that somebody, a statistician from statistical institution will go and work on a permanent base in the ministry in charge of border control, in charge of population registration, and, and bring there the, the knowledge of statistician. But at the opposite, it will be good also that somebody from the ministry go and work in the statistical office to see what is the other orientation. You see, there is a lot of improvement that are needed, and uh, we saw some sign in this direction in all the country. Thank you so much, uh, Michel. Very uh, important insight as well on, on this issue. Um, just as a closer, I would like to ask our guests, and again, thank you so much for joining us. This is our very first mm -hmm. uh, live discussion um, coming from GM DAC. Hope you enjoyed it. I will just turn to Frank first for some last comments on, on, on the study. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jorge. I would like to underline two key points. One is that is that the UN uh, system has been talking in recent years about the need for a global migration data capacity building program um, to help uh, UN member states improve their data on migration. And this is mentioned specifically in the Global Compact on Migration under Objective 1. Um, I think the results from this study can feed into or provide ideas uh, uh, um, for that program. I think uh, what this study does is give a, it gives us a snapshot of the capacities that exist in many of these countries and the challenges that they face, both in terms of lack of resources, but also sometimes lack of training and, and, and staff in a very fast moving environment. But also, um, it's not just about improving the capacity to produce data. We also found that there's a need to improve the capacity to analyze and use data and to make sure it's shared in an effective manner um, with a whole range of different users. So I think there are important lessons from this uh, new international in-depth study, which could be taken on board in any new um, UN Global Migration Data Capacity Building Program. The second point I want to make is that I think the, um, the approach that we took and the methodology of the study um, could be of interest to other countries. Uh, this is only a first pilot study focusing on six countries, but the study could be potentially replicated in many other countries around the world, and it could prov be or provide a useful tool for countries that want to conduct some kind of a national migration data assessment or on a periodic basis. Um, so we'd be happy to work with any interested countries in advising them on how they could adopt uh, a similar approach and learn lessons from um, the uh, research that we carried out for this uh, report. So thank you. Thank you so much, Frank. And uh, a call to action for uh, interested countries that that would like also to be part of a future exercise, uh, as you mentioned, this is this is a first, uh, in, in terms of the approach uh, for the study. Um, I will turn now to Elisa for some last words. Over to you. Thank you very much, Jorge. Um, I think those of us who work, you know, in the migration data space, whether we're in international organizations or 
national statistical offices or, or other um, or other sectors, I think we're very used to saying that the migration evidence base is poor, and that it's patchy, and that it really needs to change. I think now we know globally that this is a fact. There is a real and urgent need to simply generate more information on migration and also to crucially use it for policy and programming. What I think makes this study quite special and quite different is the fact that because we spoke to six different countries who, again, are very, very different on how sort of the realities on the ground are in terms of migration data, we kind of gave a bit of a voice or allowed some of these topics to really come alive at national level. So I think rather than just um, sort of complaining about how bad the evidence base is that we all do very, very often because it is very patchy, I think this kind of study gives us a few really concrete um, examples to build on in different countries, uh, different practices that we see replicated in two or three very different countries in different regions. Um, you know, at the global level, for example, we talk a lot about uh, improving the use of administrative data towards migration statistics. Um, and in this study, we saw uh, two or three countries who are concretely already doing this in very different ways, uh, sort of leveraging uh, different databases uh, from uh, administrative sources towards their migration statistics at national level. Uh, data integration is another sort of topic that is talked about a lot at, at global level. Uh, the need to integrate different types of migration data from different sources to sort of uh, generate a richer picture of, uh, of the migration reality in a specific country. Again, in this study, we also saw some very concrete examples of this happening, but also in different ways in different countries. So I think um, a lot of really interesting practices and topics came up in this study that really are relevant to the global level because they really provide real life examples of what these may look like. Thank you. And if I may add a, a last point. Of course. Um, I think uh, today and in in this film and this discussion also um, enables us to give a voice to the people who participated in the study. And what typically happens in these sorts of uh, studies is that we hear from experts and not the people on the ground that are dealing with these issues on a day-to-day -day basis. And I think one of the strengths of this report is that it does give a voice to people working in different national statistical offices and other parts of uh, government in these countries uh, working with migration data and statistics. It gives them an opportunity and a voice to, to express their views and opinions uh, and, to, and, we, and through, I think, today's uh, discussion, hopefully, we're um, beginning to raise more awareness about some of the both challenges but also opportunities in this area. Okay. I think that the main challenges in uh, migration data collection is that the traditional tools are not the, the most uh, useful. Census will never bring you a lot of information on migration and survey Yes, there exists some uh, module, migration module that you may include in survey, but to get really a strong information, you need to have a, the same survey every year and to go on with these so that you can identify trends in all phenomena related to migration. I think that uh, in the field of international migration data collection, we are obliged to look at administrative source. And we are obliged to try to see how to use them to provide appropriate data. And that's a very, very big challenge. A challenge of coordination, a challenge of cooperation, a challenge in all the directions. But also a challenge because we need methodology. Just, just to, take, to consider the border control, it's not only to say how many enter, how many exit. These are not all migrants. You have to develop a methodology that allow you to identify who is migrant within those who cross the border. And I would like to mention also uh, a big difference uh, between the six countries that we uh, study. These are, three of them are immigration country and three of them were immigration country. 
And uh, it's clear that our recommendation should not forget these immigration country. And the big problem there is uh, to collect data on migrant, on out migrant, those who are living abroad. This is the diaspora. This is those who leave the country and also those return to the country. In a lot of country, uh, the returning migrant may have a huge impact on the, the development in their village, in the local society. So collecting information on returning migrant may be important. So I would like really that in the forthcoming revision of the UN recommendation, there will be a, a large part showing how to use the administrative source and giving also a very important role on the data collection on immigration, because more than half of the country around the world are more are really immigrating country. Out migration is very important. Just to take the example of India, we are also working on India, and we have seen that the, in India you have so many immigrants from India, and India is not able to provide any statistics on these, and it concerns one more than one billion people around the world, one of, one of the six of the of the planet. So we are really to take care that the new recommend, revised recommendation will not forget this uh, aspect of uh, migration. Indeed, L lots to unpack, but I guess, again, um, for those who are interested in the report, um, today this, this study has been, been launched. Uh, it's available on our website, gmdac.iom.int. Um, thank you so much also to you, Michelle, for joining us uh, remotely. Uh, we'll wrap up uh, for today. Thank you so much and uh, have a good day. Thank you.